crafty friends it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I have a video using lots and lots of scraps that was kind of the inspiration for my video I did have the new well new to me not new at all <laughs> Lawn Fawn Rarsome stamp set that I wanted to use just because it was new to me and you know I, it's fun to use a new stamp set so I decided to, to combine that with the idea of using up a bunch of scraps so I have a lot of Lawn Fawn Petite 6x6 paper pads and this one is the Perfectly Plaid Rainbow and I have a ton of scraps from it just from making a lot of cards but then I also still, also still have like a full paper pad somehow. I guess I really really like this one and bought two. Um, so I want to just focus on the scrap pile. I took all those whole sheets and I put them off to the side. I'm not going to touch them. I'm going to try to use up the scraps. I am using a sketch to inspire me. So I will link the sketch in the video description. And I, in order to kind of complete the sketch, which has like three little fishtail banners and a rectangle, I'm going to use the Cat Scrappiness Stitched Fishtail Banners and the Cat Scrappiness Cross Stitched Rectangles. I'm also going to stamp my Lawn Fawn Dinosaurs onto some of the scrap pattern paper. Not all pattern paper works as well for this kind of thing, uh, particularly stamping on, because you need a mostly solid piece of pattern paper for it. But for the most part, if you pick a, a you know, a pad of paper, all of the patterns are going to coordinate. So you should be able to, to do that. I decided to lay out my banners such that I could like put everything in the machine in one pass and get all three banners and my rectangle. And it worked because I had a lot of two inch by six inch strips and those strips would cut out two of the rectangles and three of the banners. I don't need the full banner because like I'm using the really long one. I don't need one that size. So I actually decided to show you Copic coloring on the pattern paper versus on plain cardstock. And the thought behind this was I wanted to use the pattern paper because you can color a little bit faster since you the pattern paper kind of covers up any mistakes or any blending that isn't so smooth and so you don't have to take as much time but also it used up more scraps then when i did do a few copic colored ones just on plain cardstock to show you the difference i also used scraps of that so either way to me it's a good kind of scrap busting exercise i am going to fussy cut these so i am scribbling outside the lines to color the green I did YG212325 and YG17 for the spots. I used V202225 for the purple and BG53 and 57 for the blue. And then I think I used one darker color of each, which for like little spots and things, which doesn't really matter so much what color you choose. And you could just use your darkest color. So when I tried to color just as quickly with the Copics, the dinosaur wound up really blotchy on the pattern or on the white paper it wasn't as smooth and I am using Michael's Recollections cardstock because that's my preferred Copic coloring method however like or cardstock it's similar to the 110 pound from uh, Nina that a lot of people like to use it's just a bit cheaper I think part of the reason I had a difficult time blending this because when I colored the purple dinosaur, it blended in a similar amount of time as the pattern paper. But this one, I think because the YG21 is so much lighter than the 23, getting the blend between the two took a long time. But I did decide to still make this a quick coloring. Like it's not my most preferred blend. It's not the most accurate shadows. I just chose some shadow areas to add some interest. So once I had all of my dinosaurs fussy cut, and I did pick the two dinosaurs in the set that were easiest to fussy cut because I didn't have the coordinating dies, I traced around the edges with a memento tuxedo black marker, and that just kind of made the edges look a little bit more finished and covered up any mistakes I may have made while fussy cutting. 
because I die cut a ton of these, I think I made eight cards in all, I decided I would just put my sentiment in a stamp positioner tool. So here I have the mini Misty and I'm going to use VersaFine ink. It, for the most part, gives a good impression the first time, but because these are brand new stamps, I usually decide to stamp twice just to make sure I get a nice impression. And I have all my card bases. I'm stamping directly onto the card base as inspired by the sketch. I actually followed the sketch pretty closely this time, which is a little unusual for me, but I picked a very simple sketch. So I'm going to, um, at the end, I'll show you both dinosaurs for comparison in case one looks better on the finished card to you and you can kind of compare them. But um, I'm going to sort of arrange all of my banners while thinking about where I'm going to place the uh, rectangle. So I'm not going to measure anything. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. Also, I die cut them from the semi-solid papers, but the semi-solid papers are also what I'm using for that rectangle. So with that in mind, I'm going to put the green dinosaurs on the blue paper and then the purple dinosaurs on the green and the blue on t I don't know. Like I'm just going to kind of rotate around essentially. Like that to me made things go the easiest. And so I would think about that if you were trying to use up some scraps, maybe picking a pattern to paper line that has a whole bunch of different color semi-solids would make this a bit easier. But if you're only making a few cards, not as big of a deal. So since my rectangle doesn't have any adhesive on it yet, I put adhesive on my banners and kind of arranged them underneath where it would be, where I thought it would make sense. Then I'm going to, and I decided to make mine all like different varying lengths. I forget if that's what the sketch looks like, but um, I want to give things a little bit of dimension. So instead of using foam, something that I've been doing a lot lately, and you've heard me say in the past couple of videos, is just taking my scraps of cardstock and doubling them up and creating like fake foam tape. Like just these scraps of cardstock layered on each other and adding my own adhesive has been doing the trick. It makes the card more recyclable in the end, which is pretty cool too, because everything on the card is made of paper. So, you know, when this card is done being enjoyed, it can be tossed into the recycling bin. So that's kind of cool. But also it saves me money because I don't have to buy foam or dots or whatever. Um, and in this case, the whole point of this card was to use up some scraps. So here I'm using up my white cardstock scraps. So I popped up the rectangle on my fake foam tape and I popped up the dinosaur on my fake foam tape. There's nothing to do with foam, fake paper, whatever. Anyway, um, once I placed the dinosaur down, I felt like there was just like a lot of space on either side if I centered him. So I wanted to add another little quick element. And I, in the kind of the idea behind the card was using scraps. Well, I thought, well, I could also use my stash. And so I have a whole bunch of enamel type hearts. These ones I think are from the Target dollar spot, so I can't find them anymore. But I just kind of place those in a little arrangement around the dinosaurs to use up some more supplies. And then here are my eight finished cards, kind of following all that procedure all the way through. I felt really happy to use up a ton of scraps and some other things. And that's it for my cards today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials and haven't yet, please subscribe. I will leave some links to the products used in the video description, as well as a coupon code in case you want to pick up some of the supplies. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Have an awesome day. Bye.